we are called to live a life of urgency for Jesus. So guys, we've been doing a series on the day of the Lord and it's really been an overview just looking at different things Jesus will do at his second coming when he comes again. And it's as simple as he has promised things and he's faithful. So we know he's going to do that. So we put our hope in that. That's our hope. And we have such an amazing hope. But now I want to take all that and just leave you guys with a practical encouragement, a picture of how to live this Christian life with urgency. We know what the day of the Lord is. It's this day where God is going to fulfill the promises he made to Israel and to the world. But one thing that's so interesting, and this is a phrase that we see throughout scripture, and I want to really share this and show it to you guys, is that the day of the Lord, the coming of the Lord, the second coming of Jesus, right, is at hand. And this is something that we see in the prophets, and it's a picture of urgency. In Joel 2, it says, blow the trumpet in Zion sound the alarm on my holy hill let all who live in the land tremble for the day of the lord is coming it is close at hand so it is coming quickly and it is at hand this is a phrase that's in the prophets and if you read a lot of the different prophets they talk about the day of the lord and they always talk about it with urgency it is coming quickly the day of the lord is at hand and then jesus comes on the scene and what does he preach he says repent for the kingdom of god is at hand and so this isn't a new message jesus doesn't come on the scene preaching some random message about this kingdom like people have never heard about no he's preaching what was in the old testament he's preaching that there's urgency the kingdom of god is at hand the day of the lord is at hand the judgment is at hand that's how jewish people would have heard it because they are so familiar with the prophets and it doesn't stop there even the apostles, when giving their letters, right, and they're sharing like how we should be living, how should we, we should be serving God. Look what they say here, Philippians 4, 5. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. We know that phrase, don't we? <laughs> James 5, 8. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. So can you see that this is a big picture? This isn't just something that's in the prophets, not just something Jesus preached, not just something the apostles preached, but it's all through the Bible. This urgent picture that the day of the Lord is coming, the judgment day of God, the wrath to come is coming, the kingdom of God is coming, the resurrection is coming, the Lord is coming in power, the Son of Man is coming. This is a picture of urgency. And what I think is so important about this, guys, is knowing that the time is short, it gives us urgency, it motivates us to live for Jesus with everything inside of us. Imagine if you're running a race, right? And you wanna get to that prize. And so you ask somebody who knows, you ask them, hey, how close is the finish line? And they're like, the finish line is at hand, it's near, it's coming quickly. What are you gonna do? Well, you're gonna, even though you're tired, you're gonna run extra hard. You're gonna finish that race fast because you know it's coming quickly. And so there's this beautiful sense of urgency in our race of faith. And Paul describes this in 1 Corinthians. He says in, ver in chapter 7, What I mean, brothers and sisters, is that the time is short. From now on, those who have wives should live as if they do not. Those who mourn as if they did not. Those who are happy as if they were not. Those who buy something as if it were not theirs to keep. Those who use the things of the world as if not engrossed in them for this world in its present form is passing away. So Paul's describing, guys, it's near, it's near, the time is short, so live with urgency. He's like describing, don't be distracted. Even if you have a wife, don't be distracted by that. Even if you're really happy or you're mourning, don't let that distract you. It's this picture of the time is short. Don't let small things get in the way, live with urgency. Another really powerful passage is in 2 Timothy where Paul says, to Timothy, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom. So all these pictures describing the coming of the Lord, he says, in view of this, I give you this charge, preach the word. Do you hear the urgency there? He's coming back to judge the living and the dead. He's coming to appear. He's coming to set up his kingdom. So preach the word. 
So maybe for you, that means taking the first step of the race. Maybe you've never fully repented and surrendered your life to Jesus and put your trust in what he did on the cross. Maybe you're still in danger of the wrath to come because you haven't trusted in his payment for your sin. If that's the case, I want to say it is time. Now is the time to put your trust in Jesus. Why? Because the day of the Lord is coming. It is time. Maybe you have done that but maybe you've been kind of trapped and caught up in our cultural Christianity where it's like you just go to church on Sunday and that's it. And you've never taken the word of God and read about the life Jesus describes there and truly lived it out and obeyed him and lived it out, this amazing life. If that's you, I wanna say it's time. Why? Because the day of the Lord is coming. Maybe you've been following Jesus for a long time and you feel tired from the race. You feel like, man, I really need endurance. If that's you, I wanna say it's also time, time to endure. Why? Because the day of the Lord's coming. Maybe you've always wished that you had the boldness to step out and share the gospel, but you've not done that because you're shy. If that's you, I want to say it's time to step up and be bold for the Lord. Why? Because the day of the Lord's coming. We could go on and on and on, but our life should be motivated and driven by this coming day because it is so, so amazing. Jesus is going to come back. Let's make sure that we're living for him with absolutely everything inside of us. There's a, a really simple, simple application. I really love this about Paul. He says this in 2 Corinthians, and this has been impacting my life so much recently. He says, we make it our goal to please him. It's simple. We wanna live for him, we wanna love him, we wanna please him. He says, whether we are at home in the body or away from it, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. And guys, Paul was living for this. He realized, man, I'm gonna stand before Jesus one day. It's coming soon. I'm gonna stand before the judgment seat of Christ, so I'm making it my goal to please him. And that's been something that's impacted my life. I wanna please Jesus, because I realize, man, one day I'm gonna stand before him. It's gonna be the most, that's gonna be the most breathtaking moment. Nobody could prepare us for what that's going to be like. So in this life where I don't see God, I want to live by faith. I want to really please him and realize in that moment, I want to stand before him with joy. I want to live for him and trust him faithfully until the day he comes so I can stand before him with joy. I want to make it my goal to be well-pleasing to him. The coming of the Lord is the finish line of our race. Paul says it this way, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. I think you know what that day is. Not only to me, but to also to all who have longed for his appearing. Are we longing for his appearing? Are we longing for his return? Guys, may we long for his return put all of our hope in that day. May we not get distracted with the cares of this life, but live with urgency, loving Jesus faithfully, laying aside things of this life, not getting caught up in riches and temptation and sin, but setting our eyes on that day. May we do that. Guys, a day is coming. Let's bear fruit for Jesus. Let's live for him. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. A day is coming.